The old school loomed, dark against the twilight sky, crestwood high. It stood silent and empty, or so it seemed. Inside, shadows stretched. They grew longer as the sun dipped lower. A cold breeze whispered through the empty hallways. It carried the scent of dust and something else, something faintly metallic. The school held its breath, waiting for the darkness to fall completely, waiting for its secrets to come alive. I can't believe we're stuck here. Jake kicked his desk, a low thud echoed in the silent classroom. Quiet down, Jake. Mr. Thompson will be back any minute. Like he cares. The third student, Emily, remained silent. Her eyes darted around the room. She felt a shiver crawl up her spine. Something wasn't right. A noise, faint but unmistakable, a whisper coming from the hallway outside the classroom door. Did you hear that? Hear what? Are you scared of ghosts now? The whispering grew louder. Now it sounded like a name, Emily's name, softly spoken over and over again. The door creaked open. A figure stood silhouetted against the dim hallway light. Old man Withers, the janitor. His eyes were wide with fear. You kids shouldn't be here. This school, it ain't safe after dark. What do you mean? This school, it holds on to some folks. Folks who ain't ever leaving. He shuffled away down the hallway, his words hanging in the air like a curse. Panic surged through Emily. We need to get out of here, she whispered urgently. They rushed to the classroom door, rattled the handle, locked. It's no use, Jake said, his voice tight with fear. We're trapped. The whispering outside the door intensified, closer now, angrier. A cold wind swept through the room, slamming the door shut with a deafening bang. The lights flickered and died, plunging them into darkness. Terror choked the air. Emily could hear her own heart pounding in her ears. She felt a cold breath on her cheek, a presence unseen but undeniably there. Who's there? Jake's voice cracked. A low, mournful moan seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. The temperature plummeted. The air grew heavy, thick with the smell of decay and despair. The ghostly presence was growing stronger. Section 7 the frantic escape. The night was thick with an unsettling silence, broken only by the occasional creak of the old school building. Shadows danced on the walls, creating an eerie atmosphere that made every step feel like a journey into the unknown. Where's my phone? I need to call for help. The darkness seemed to swallow every sound, making the search even more desperate. Each second felt like an eternity as the fear of the unknown grew stronger. No signal. We're trapped. Alone. With whatever is haunting this school. The realization hit them like a ton of bricks. The walls seemed to close in, and the air grew colder, as if the very building was alive and aware of their presence. Suddenly, a loud crash from the back of the classroom split the silence. It was as if the building itself was trying to communicate, to warn them, or perhaps to scare them away. The sound echoed through the empty halls, amplifying their fear. The ghostly moan turned into an ear-splitting shriek. It was a sound that seemed to pierce their very souls, freezing them in place for a moment. The shriek was followed by an eerie silence, making the atmosphere even more oppressive. Mrs. Garcia grabbed Emily's hand and pulled her towards the broken window. We have to get out of here! She whispered urgently. The moonlight filtered through the shattered glass, casting a ghostly glow on their path. They squeezed through the window, ignoring the scrapes and cuts from the shattered glass. The pain was a small price to pay for the chance of escape. Every movement was a struggle, but the thought of freedom kept them going. They ran, faster than they'd ever run before. Their hearts pounded in their chests and their breaths came in ragged gasps. The fear of what was behind them propelled them forward, giving them a burst of energy they didn't know they had. This way! Mrs. Garcia led the way, her eyes scanning the dark corridors for any sign of danger. The sound of their footsteps echoed through the halls, a constant reminder of the urgency of their situation. 
They had to find a way out before it was too late. Section 8. Back to normal. The next morning, the sun seemed to chase away the shadows of the night. Crestwood High looked like any other school, normal, safe. But Emily, Jake and Sarah couldn't shake the memory of the previous night, the whispers, the cold, the terror. They walked through the hallways trying to convince themselves that everything was fine. But every creak of the floorboards, every flicker of the light sent shivers down their spines. The school was alive with the usual hustle and bustle of students, but to them it felt like a facade, a mask hiding something sinister. We tried to tell our story, but no one believed us. Of course not. Who would? Our friends laughed it off. Teachers dismissed it as overactive imaginations. But we knew what we saw, what we felt. The fear was real. The cold, the whispers, the shadows that seemed to move on their own. It was all real. We felt isolated, like we were the only ones who knew the truth. The only ones who had seen the darkness lurking within the walls of Crestwood High. They stood outside the school during the day, staring up at the building with apprehension. The sun was shining, birds were singing, and everything seemed perfectly normal. But they knew better. They knew that as soon as the sun set, the shadows would return. The whispers would start again. The terror would come back. They felt a sense of dread, knowing that they would have to face it all over again. But they also felt a sense of determination. They had survived one night, they could survive another. Together, they would uncover the secrets of Crestwood High. They would find out what was haunting their school and put an end to it, no matter what it took. Section 9, The Note. Later that day, Emily found a folded piece of paper in her locker, a note written in shaky handwriting. It's not over. They never really leave. It's not over. They never really leave. A chill ran down her spine. She glanced nervously around the hallway, empty, or so it seemed. Who had written the note? And what did it mean? Was it just a cruel prank? Or was something more sinister at play? Section 10 the final chime. The moment had arrived, the one that everyone had been waiting for, yet dreading in equal measure. The final chime of the school bell. The final school bell rang, its sound reverberating through the empty hallways and echoing off the walls, signaling the end of another day at Crestwood High. Students surged out of classrooms, their footsteps a chaotic symphony of freedom. They laughed and chattered their voices blending into a cacophony of youthful exuberance, eager to escape the confines of Crestwood High. The air was thick with the scent of anticipation and the promise of the weekend ahead. Emily lingered near her locker, her fingers tracing the cold metal as if seeking comfort from its solidity. She watched her classmates with a sense of detachment, feeling like an outsider in her own world, her heart heavy with dread. The weight of unspoken fears and unanswered questions pressed down on her, making it hard to breathe. What now? She whispered to herself, her voice barely audible over the din of departing students. As she turned to leave, the hallway seemed to stretch out before her an endless tunnel of uncertainty. She thought she saw a figure standing at the end of the hallway. It was just a fleeting glimpse, a shadow that seemed to materialize out of nowhere. A shadowy figure that seemed to shimmer and fade with the flickering lights. The figure turned, its movements slow and deliberate, as if it was aware of her presence. And for a fleeting moment, their eyes met. Emily could feel a chill run down her spine, a cold dread that rooted her to the spot. Emily could have sworn she saw a pair of glowing eyes staring directly at her. They were like two burning coals piercing through the darkness and into her soul. Then, just as quickly, the figure vanished. It was as if it had never been there, leaving behind only the lingering sense of unease, leaving Emily alone in the eerie silence of the empty hallway. The silence was oppressive, pressing in on her from all sides, amplifying her fear. The final chime echoed in her ears, a haunting reminder of the secrets hidden within the walls of Crestwood High. It was a sound that would stay with her long after she had left the school behind. A haunting reminder of the secrets hidden within the walls of Crestwood High. 
secrets that whispered in the dark corners waiting to be uncovered. Emily knew that this was not the end, but merely the beginning of a journey that would take her deep into the heart of the unknown.